right. Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy James. I'm with Project Art. I'm here with Nico Luminous. What up? And this is a test run on a video radio podcast, if there is such a thing. Nice. This nice. is uh, our pilot we're we'll putting together. Get it going. Nice. Yeah, I ran into Nico at Trader Joe's. <laughs> yep. And I was, as always, I was like, dude, you're the best. Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm like, I still remember 2013 Jam and Jam. You rocked it. I remember when you were with uh, the Nico uh, Club Nokia. Oh, yeah. Nice. Which is a very big, well-respected venue mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Up. Loose and Dossier, hey, I remember. That was dope. That was huge. Yeah, nice. Um, I didn't even know I was going to the show, and I didn't even know who was playing. I was passing on flyers for Henry Pearlstein, and, and I, uh, when I got there and realized you were playing, I was like, yes, that's a huge, got to be a huge booking for you. Um, yeah, sure. Thankful, you know, I love playing shows in LA and home. That's nice. I don't have to like travel far, fly some far away place. And I love, you know, working with the Do Lab and Lucent Dossier. I think, yeah, I said Dirtwire was there too. That was okay. good. Nice. So the, so the whole purpose of this show <laughs> is uh, we're wanting to talk about music. You know, we just got done. We did the Gem and Jam show. We're talking about Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. We're talking about a lot of subjects, and we're gonna kind of just mold this show as we go. Yeah. Start piecing it together with obviously music being the number one reason why uh, Nico and myself are getting together um, to talk about uh, music, culture, all the stuff that we're involved with. It's amazing. Yeah, and so that's what that's what I'm most excited about. So I wanted to start with Jam and Jam. We both went to Jam and Jam. There was 19 booked artists. And one of the... Are you talking about the pre-party? The pre-party. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A few days ago, yeah. So we nice. both went to that. And so uh, I know that Fat Droid Productions, Project R, and several other filmmakers are putting together a recap video. Nice. So this kind of is going to be like a, a recap of the actual party. Hmm. Um, nice. What you thought of it, uh, as well, who you liked. Because unlike a traditional uh, music experience, you get like three bands, three DJs, three of anything. Yeah. There they are. The, the opener... You know the next person. I don't know the official term, and then the headliner. There's mm -hmm. a term for that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? The support. Guy. The support. That's right. That's why I have you here. Ah, nice. <laughs> You're the expert. Uh, the support. We'll, we'll go on. And, and but th this event is a psychedelic culture event. Um, it, it also does 19 booked acts, which is crazy. Yeah, for sure. Um, I didn't realize there was 19 people there. Yeah, 19. I counted them all. And so, out of all those artists, I would—I was curious to know which one did you like the best and why. <clears throat> oh man, that, that's a tough call. I heard some good music um, the whole night. I mean, man, that's a tough call. The upstairs room, you know, I'm more of like say a bass music trap artist, and so that—that's more like my style of music. But also, Andrelian was blowing me away at about one. No, no, I'm sorry, three a.m. I got there kind of late too, so I didn't catch the the. I know Solular and Rust Liquid is amazing, but I didn't catch their sets. But yeah, Andre was rocking it at 3 a.m. It was bouncing, and there was heavy bass on the floor. That was a good moment. I love Stylus Beats. He put it down. That was definitely dope. I think Stylus Beats and Antennae were, were both really good. Okay, you know what? I had to... I'm going to... Don't go in there. <laughs> Let me grab this. So... I'll kind of I'll kind of give a little bit of a backstory actually. Besides the Trader Joe's, is is that uh, this show we literally have talked about doing this for a matter of like a couple hours. Nice. If over the span of a couple days even. Yeah. So the show's a little. We're putting it together. It's a little. It's gonna be a little rough at first. <laughs> nice. Hence me getting up and grabbing my phone. Uh, but if we'll I can keep find it off. yeah, if I can find this uh, inside my photos here. I actually want to name all 16 D, um, musical acts. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to make the mistake. Producers and DJs. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know which the different ones are, you know, but, but which ones are producers and which ones are DJs. I know a handful of the producers. Of course. So we got Louis Bagels and Ali Dolly. Oh, wow. I missed them. I didn't even know they were on the lineup. Which are good friends of probably Oh, yeah. I love mine. those guys. Yeah. Dirty Beetle Clan. Those Dirty guys Beetle, are a yeah. solid team for sure. Uh, so this was the Cruise Coalition stage. He opened. We had Rybo, who's Desert Hearts. Uh, DJ Loomer, uh, we have Diva Danielle, you know mm -hmm. Diva. Yeah, I love Danielle. Uh, Sasha Rabati, he's Dirty Bird. Hmm. Do you know Sasha Rabati? I don't know. Uh, we have Worthy, which is Dirty Bird. And I Am Nobody was the headline at 3 to 4 a.m. Nice. So on the Abundance stage, we have Rhythm Star, Dreamer's Delight, Mimosa, Atene, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Stylus Beats, and Hug Life. Oh, right. Yeah, Hug Life is dope. 
Yeah, what do you think of Hug Life? Hug Life is dope. I know that guy, Keith. He's, he's a super real guy, super down to earth, and he makes great music. So uh, before, we've got the recreation stage, but since we're on Hug Life, that's something else we'd like to bring to this new audience we're going to create, because there's going to be new people out there and watch the show. Nice. Is because you know Hug Life, that's like, let's get him on the show. Is that something That's something you could work on for us, right? Um, yeah, possibly. I mean, just give him a call. Say, I mean, I don't know if you do a Skype interview or what. Skype, however we can get it. And, and that's also something we want the fans, because we're going we're gonna, to, or the audience, we're going to do, you know, YouTube, podcast, like a radio, video, podcast. So I want you guys, if you follow Nika Luminous or you follow Project Art and what I do, you know, request someone and we'll see if we can't get them on the show. Nice, nice. Just a little plug. Um, so recreation stage, we got Soiler. Uh, he opened Russ Liquid. Alex and Allison Gray were live painting on that stage with Ott and Spongle and Adrian. Um, do you know how to, how do we pronounce it? Andrelian, his name's Andre. Formerly Hayoka. Hayoka, yeah, I actually knew that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, do you know the story behind that at all? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, he just had to change his name for, for some reasons. So it Do you remember out. those reasons? Yeah, I don't want to be like talking about that because it's not my business. Okay, well, so, well since talk, <laughs> talk is my business, I'll, I'll tell you what I heard. And now, again, whatever I hear is usually... That's gone. what I mean. I don't love to hear, you know, <laughs> I don't want to promote talking about something I don't have 100% grip on. So, so for those of you who aren't familiar with transformational music festivals, um, we party on Indian reserve land sometimes. And so what I heard is, is that the Indians asked for him to change his name, Hayuka. And uh, now these stories you have to take with a grain of salt because the community as a whole always has stories. We are storytellers <laughs> as well in f the art community. So that's what I heard, and, and you know we'll have to ask him on the show and find out about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let, let you know, get it from the horse's mouth for sure. There we go. Um, so what else we got here? So why don't you tell your side of the story for the inception of what we're doing now and, and kind of give a background on who you are. Um, my name is Nico Luminous. If you don't know me, I'm a music, music producer slash vocalist slash DJ, just live stage performer, uh, type of person. I'm here in LA. I've been here for about five years, been on the West coast for a man, almost 20 years. And, um, I just, you know, want to create music that really, like, just kind of lifts people up in a more spiritual way. I don't want to just make music that you shake your ass to and go home and want you to feel something a little more with the music that I make. You know, I've, I've gone all genres from being, like, acoustic, organic singer-songwriter guy to, like, big, banging, crazy trap beats. Now I kind of want to go somewhere in the middle with, like, dope beats, with a lot of bass and, and good, good swing, but a lot of organic energy, too. Um, I don't know. I just love making all music. Sometimes I make, you know, synthesizer music. But um, I just want to make things that are meaningful and, and leave a solid legacy behind. That's what I want to do with my music. That's awesome. So you, you do several things. You DJ, you produce your own beats, and you can do live music. Yeah, for sure. Beatboxing. I'm trying to do some stuff like the piano, like... And like kind of then like loop that drop some heavy bass behind it and kind of create it live on stage. Is, okay, so, so before we really dive in to the subject matters, which will come another day, we're going we're gonna to really hit on some consciousness, some, you know, some music, mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to talk about a range of things, but um, for now, I actually want to focus on, on you a little bit. Um, and, and, you know, how did you get to where you're at? Because you're rep, you have an agent. Yeah, um, sure. Do you have a manager? Um... Street Ritual is kind of, you know, my, my agents, or they kind of, they're my agency that books me. And they're a label, so they, they do some management where they, you know, they help get us gigs. They have showcases and stuff like that. And Street Ritual is an underground label out of Oakland making, you know, they've really been dedicated to the heart of that Bay Area. I mean, maybe not only music from the Bay Area, but that Bay Area bass music. That's the culture that they love and promote. So um, I just love it that they keep it real like that. So, I mean, they don't, they're not my manager, but they, they, you know, they hook me up. They manage me in, in ways. Right. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's say you're uh, a younger guy or girl yep. and you just moved to Los Angeles or let's like say, thanks to the internet now, yep. let's say you're in Africa, South Africa sure, or anywhere. wherever, yep. you know, and, and because you're a little bit more established, we're here sure. in Hollywood and yep. you know, you're doing it, what, what would your advice for them? How can they take that next step into booking a gig and getting an agent? Um, I guess if, if you, well, if you want to get booked in a gig, it helps if you know the people that put on gigs. So you got to be out there, you got to be mixing with people and you know, it's not like you want to be pushy and 
and annoying people, but you really want to start inquiring and being curious. Like, oh, you know, you see someone up there playing, you're like, oh man, I want to do that. You know, so you, you have to think. You have to think about ways to make it happen. And really, it's going to happen if you dedicate to the craft, making music. Whether it's straight DJing, then be the best possible DJ. If you don't make your beats, that's fine. You're just DJing. Get really good at it. Better than anyone you've ever seen. You know, and if you're producing, try to, it's, it's, a, it's a longer road for sure because getting your stuff sounding professional take, takes a while. But um, you just have to be dedicated and you have to love it. You have to love what you're doing and, and want to share something you know, that you think that's going to add, add good value, add good energy to, to you know, whatever you want to be a part of. So my only concern about what we're doing right now, and I'm very honored and thankful. This is that, fun. Glad we're doing yeah, it. Thank nice. you so much because this is actually your equipment. Yeah, we're going to make sure this is a little bit that way. So um, I'm actually, a lot of times in life, we're talking Napoleon Hill a lot, right? Think and go rich. Excuse me, think and grow rich. And a lot of times, Love that we, book. right? Uh, I need to reread it. Um, I've read other books like Outliers and Blink. Nice. Now I got to check those out. Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. So a lot of the things people worry about as artists, including myself, mm -hmm. is about all the things that could go wrong. Right. One of the things I'm actually worrying about right now are all the things that could go right mm -hmm. um, with what we're doing this very moment because you do produce music and do live music. And mm -hmm. where I'm going with this is is you're an extremely talented individual. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, to be able to DJ, produce your own beats, first of all. From DJing to producing your own beats, I'm just saying, that's a huge stretch. And I'm saying this potentially for the younger guys out there. Takes a while. Some people, they just like, you know, they gravitate towards it. Like, I want to make beats. I can hear it. I can make it. That's in your head. And some people, it's like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. You know, so, and it's, it's all good wherever you're at. But um, it is, it's, it's dedication. You have to dedicate a lot of patience and love and time, you know, and, and brain power to learn stuff. So it, it's dope. It's very rewarding. And so then I actually want to add on top of there now, now your live element. Sure. The fact that you're able to create music on the spot, mm -hmm. um, which actually, I actually want to put you on the spot now and ask you to do something just to show right. people. Yeah, I got the machine, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can do stuff, you know, like tap out beats. There's guys that are way better than me at this, like Mad Zach or Ill Gates. They'll do this live in front of thousands of people. It's pr pretty cool. I, I'm, I haven't done this on stage yet, but I'm getting there, you know. Um, <laughs> Excited this this piano stuff on one hand, the drums on the left. Like this, this is absolutely incredible. I'm sitting here literally like, getting chills in my body that nice. we're, we're even doing this because we. It's insane that you like with both hands. A little bit sloppy, but that's I'm I'm just embarking on this journey, so I'm having fun with it. You know? well, that's actually why I want to revisit the subject of uh, of the difference between a DJ and a music producer, but also yeah. the difference between that to film producing. Sure. And so we kind of touched base on the difference between a DJ and a producer because you make your own beats. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, as I go into this transformational music scene, and I tell people all the time I'm a producer, mm -hmm. and they, they get that that's film producing because I'm not holding a camera. Yeah. What they don't understand is 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 because these are music heads. <clears throat> right. If you go to a show, these kids love music. Yes. And then understand that when I mean by film producer, I don't actually create the the film itself. Mm -hmm. Now I do sometimes because I'm a very grassroots level. Uh, film producer. I will shoot my own stuff. It doesn't mm -hmm. always make sense to hire a camera guy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but at the same time, that's I want to tie this back into how privileged I feel to be in here and watch you do oh, that. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks for coming over and doing this. Fun just to start pushing the vibe and getting out there online or what, whatever, you know? Yeah, because to think that, that this camera allows me the ability to hang out with lots of artists that are at your level. Because there's actually more more really talented artists in LA than we could even meet ourselves. Oh, it's insane. I mean, there's literally a million actors registered with SAG. Wow. Um, or at least, if it's not with SAG, it's at least a million actors that file as an actor on right. their tax returns oh, wow. in Los Angeles. Wow. Let alone you know, the whole United States. I mean, there's mm -hmm. several actors that live outside. So the art community in Los Angeles is huge, number one. And two, is thriving, is exponentially, uh, amazingly talented. Yeah, yeah. For, it's, I love it here. Yeah, it's a lot of people inspiring me to, to be much better than I am at my craft and that's that's where it's at you know up in your level getting your potential we all have infinite potential you know it's just how much time do you want to de dedicate to accessing that potential you know yeah so a couple subjects we've talked about hitting base on our consciousness um, booking live yeah, sure. uh, DJs and producers both yeah, nice. um, even actors just getting guests on the show mm -hmm. finding a place to shoot uh, and so basically I'm, I'm putting this out there to the universe and yeah. to the audience nice. like this is your chance to be involved in the co-creation mm -hmm. of what we're doing Mm -hmm. uh, which is if you want to see an artist or there is a piece of advice you have for us that give it out you, you will, there is an opportunity to get a special thanks credit nice, nice. Um, also I want to urge the audience that is watching this to, to the, we got to jump on this because you're a very talented artist I fully expect Excellent. by March or April you'll probably be a little too busy to do the show Sure, it's possible. You never know. Summertime, yeah. You'd be playing a lot of gigs. Yeah, sure. So one of the things I want to do is take the show over at that point and kind of be one market, your gigs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also bring other people on to fill in for you that can uh, recap yeah, the yeah. events and just keep it paying it forward to yeah, future for artists. Yeah, sure. Nice. I love it. Um, so again, this is to the audience. This is to you guys because this is a very grassroots pilot thing. Um, I'm gonna need your guys' help because neither one of us um, have any money that we're gonna put into this right. out of our own Do, pockets. Doing it for the love, for sure. Doing it for the love, yeah. We're just gonna basically use each other's gear, my camera and your sound equipment, to put this show together. So I guess you can kind of think of us like a PBS. Yes. <laughs> we are gonna be funded by you viewers. And the more of you that contribute and support what we're doing, the more we can get Nico to play music and <laughs> You know, you've already got how many tracks created in your lifetime? Oh man, I don't, couldn't say. I've been I've been producing music for over twelve years, so I mean, I'm sure hundreds doesn't mean they're all out. You know, I mean, I almost have a hundred on my SoundCloud, and that's just stuff that I've released, and so many more that I'm working on. Yeah, it's hard to say. Hard to say. I wish I knew how many tracks I've made over the years. You know, how an art. It's like being a painter. Sometimes you have a sketch. Sometimes you make a full-on painting that took you a long yeah. time. So. Really, definitely in the hundreds, of course. And now I'm making hip hop beats on the regular, and I'm making, trying to make those fast and make a few a day. You know. Well, that could be like our first gift to the audience here. If, if you have an MP3, mm -hmm. you'd be willing to let other filmmakers use. Or... Oh yeah, film Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, a lot of my stuff's on YouTube and SoundCloud, and people just use it and write me, "Hey, can we use this song or whatever?" And that that works for me. I don't have to spend my time digging around. You know, you can go online and. See what you like. So that's something really important. So, so for anyone that stuck around this long, because you know there are certain metrics, as you're learning search engine optimization, yeah. I learned yeah. things about the amount of time people watch a video. Yeah. Most people stick on for five to ten seconds. Okay. Yeah. So the people that have made it in this this far, I'm gonna assume are really serious artists about learning more. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is is as a filmmaker myself, yeah. just getting permission to use a track that something like you've created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saves me a ton of money yeah, in licensing. Nice. nice. You know, I can actually create a film that I can say is my film now. Yeah. I got to give you, Nico Luminous, uh, music credit. Sure. Which is actually very huge for the musical artist because if I were to take a film to, like, say, yeah, Sundance. You, you never know where it's going to go. Exactly. Right? I mean, how would you feel if one of your songs was in a film in Sundance? Um, it just depends if how much they got paid versus, you know, what I got cut. <laughs> well, yeah, now we're talking about pay. <laughs> well, I'm saying if it's a major film, you yeah. know, it's one thing when we're doing this underground stuff, but say like, whoa, I just saw your song is on Sundance. Like, oh, you know, that that's probably a big, I mean, I imagine that's probably like 
I'm not familiar with it, but that's all underground kind of funding. That's like independent. That's yeah, what independent. Like. Sundance is very much catered for the independent filmmaker. So yeah. there's any one of our audience members, 16. It's just a balance, to, you know. It's yeah. all the right situation. But that would be amazing. I would love to see my song on, on a big, on a big uh, you know. I mean, I would love, I've actually never submitted any. I've got 52 high production value videos on Vimeo, and I've ever, oh, wow. actually never submitted one to a film festival. Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know what my holdup is, but uh, again, where I'm going with that is that's a, a gift we already have to the audience that could actually help some. I mean, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Right. We actually don't know where this will go when we upload it. Um, you know, yeah. Hopefully just people learned something or gained something. I mean, that that's all I want to do is, is add, you know, to, to the good things that are going on. Yeah, and so that's where I kind of like, I like to talk about the fact that the, the community that we're in is a global community. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is these f transformational music festivals are popping up all over the world. And I find this very interesting because um, <clears throat> you could be an L.A. artist and then have to go to Costa Rica and play. Mm. And so, in, a, in again, I don't study search engine optimization. I don't study online marketing. M my degree at Santa Monica College was in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of nice. lost in that world. But it's amazing. What, I, what I'm trying to figure out through a show like this is how can we connect the dots Mm -hmm. Between people, not only in America, but people all over the planet, like China, for example. Sure. China has a billion people in it. Well, you don't even know what they're going to let the people see on the internet over there, so that's that's unfortunate. But you know, do your best, I guess. Well, then we have India as well; it's got a billion people in it. Sure. And it's just a matter of time before there is a Burning Man style festival in India. Right. Oh, India uh, has huge festivals. Huge festivals. I, mean, right. I mean, I don't know. I see Diplo and Skrillex playing these giant festivals in India. So there's already it's, a it's pipeline right there. It's it's a, it's a worldwide thing. EDM is he's definitely a worldwide thing. Actually, we got it late in the States. It's been popping all over the world forever. It got here late. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up there and, and recap again what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're putting together a radio, or excuse me, video radio podcast mm -hmm. where we can talk about music, consciousness, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich style subjects. Nice, nice. Um, help up and coming artists. Yep. Make it in the scene, and and um, you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's all just, yeah, making it in the scene. God, it's, it's such a funny thing, but yeah, as long as you know you're putting out the right intention and you really just give out the right energy, it comes back to you. It's that simple. You know? Cool. Well, that wraps it up. This is a pilot episode one, I guess. All right, nice first day. Get it in. Yeah, nice. that's a wrap. Cool. All right, boom, boom, boom. Peace. Okay. Oh yeah, you want to pump?